We talked about Lennon in our most recent Beatles 60 Live, um, which is our members only bonus chatter. It is. Which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't stand Teddy saying that at all, really. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you come to Tampa and see us sometime? Come where? Tampa, Florida. Oh, I thought you said something else. I'm here and I'll tell you, brethren. <laughs> yeah. There's more of them than there are of us. And that's why there's so few of us left. Show sure, you know how it is. And here it is. Okay, boys and girls. Piss on your boots. That's my name, Gakuchka Shining, wasn't it? Oh, you Have you got a nail file? These handcuffs are killing me. <laughs> oh, Britannia, Britannia rules the... <laughs> and also, wait for it. Good job, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Half half he goes at Meddy's sight, our little hairy friend. Half half upon hey. the lamppost price. So like that. Half Look. in round the bend. This, the... <laughs> this one's better. Is that better? Look. I'd take one home with me. Explaining the aspects of John Lennon's humor, we had friend of the pod Jerry on. Yeah, we were joined by a well known Liverpool polymath, Jerry Murphy. A musician, recording artist, a power soloist, winner of the PRS John Lennon Award for songwriting. Great man, a great poker player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also works as an educator slash motivator. Uh, Jerry holds a degree in politics and education from York University, a master's in the Beatles' popular music and society from Liverpool Hope University, and so much more. He was founder and former director of Cavern City Tours. A fine human being. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll put a link to his bio in the show notes. All right. Here's a clip. Here's Jerry. Oh, there's no doubt that the Beatles have always been known for their senses of humor. John Lennon is particularly pointed out as being the intellectual humorist, the master of wordplay. Jerry, in thinking about how John in particular uh, came to be such a comedian, um, was it an element of post-war Britain simply being from Liverpool? How would you describe it? It's a little bit of everything. I've been inclined to answer the question uh, of the origins of Lennon's sense of humour from various points of view, his background, his education, uh, emerging and prevailing comic styles, particularly the rise of satire, um, and as connected to his emergence as a, as a raw original, as an artist. As with so much about this complex individual, my opinion has changed many times over. I've seen him in Wildean terms as a native wit, a language manipulator. As in pornographic priestess, stupid bloody Tuesday man, you've been a naughty girl. But mm -hmm. I've also tended to see him in a less flattering light. Uh, a vicious curl of a teddy boy who liked mm -hmm. to pick on the weak and torture the sensitive yeah. with words. There is another way to view him as an artist, writer, musician, forever in search of an audience, just like his father before him crooning with the banjo into his mother's arms. Like the city of New York, where he was destined to make home, these facets, good and bad, are all f fundamentally true. First of all, his background was riven by the contradiction of his birth and upbringing. In a city sustained by the sea where the family dislocation was common, uh, hearts would be broken. As the song says, where do all the hearts go? They go into the appreciation of the ironies of everyday life, where a flummoxed civil society was trying to impose a conformity on people whose lifestyles and experience had been defined by famine, migration and marginalisation. This, of course, that the, is, was the Liverpool that the four Beatles grew up in. The absurdity of the authority was made manifest by it, the absurdity of its representatives, mm -hmm. extended across the board from Father Bunloaf in the parish church to the blimpish mayor <laughs> and ministers who govern the common people. Mm. Hence, of course, the growth of satire as a comic form. The war was grim, but it was hilarious at the same time, believe me. British comics like Will Hay and Rob Wilton uh, had a sense of humour which started the evening off with the day war broke out, my wife turned to me and said, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> the notion of the small individual willingly taking on the might of the Wehrmacht was enough to send a music hall audience into paroxysms of laughter uh, to hide the terror. This was British culture whose central tenet of survival was not to stand alone on the beaches, but to 
not volunteer for anything. Stay out of it. Norman Wisdom would carry this one on into the 50s, but somehow he always got himself embroiled in it. That was Lennon's goonish world. Still today, Liverpool, the city where people are always on the lookout for a laugh. Perhaps to hide the essential melancholy of its Irish population base, whose history spoke of occupation, disenfranchisement, cultural and linguistic suppression. Yeah. It had come to revel in its role as the strong arms and back of the Industrial Revolution and knew that no one could be locked up for laughter. Yeah. We can say for sure that Lennon's humour was a social currency. He could make his peers laugh with just a comment, as evidence from the uncut footage from Get Back, where he states Pope basically, they died so that we may wank, <laughs> as his bandmates dissolved before him. Contrary to what we may think, Lennon was diligent in his youth. He took writing seriously, and he certainly loved the English language, whose absurd spellings and pronunciations provided him with the opportunity to lampoon. Lampoon in Italian, or lampone in Italian, means raspberry. And it could be said that his literary oeuvre was just that. The pomposity with which the language of Britlandia was regarded was ever ripe for ribaldry. Hitler had only one. <laughs> Housemaids were told to polish it behind the door. Yeah. And the Beatles' next film was to be in colour. Green. <laughs> Lennon was priceless socially and the one you'd most like to be sitting next to on the school bus. At the art college he was loved and hated in equal measure. His craziness was indulged, saw him design an artistic philosophy which was inclusive of everything, especially including rock and roll, which was a statement of rebellion in itself. He was the first among a coterie of friends, including Stuart Sutcliffe, to extend the boundaries of creation mm. to an expressionism in all of its forms, including language and dress. Put simply, Lennon was beat, Mersey beat. My contention overall, therefore, is that Lennon's comedy derived from his humour, i.e. his state of mind, and was governed by his desire to escape melancholia, which had deep roots in his essential ethnicity, as well as his own biography. Its manifestations were multifaceted and multifarious, as was those of Wilde, Joyce and Rob Wilton before him. Yeah. As former Beatles publicist Tony Barrow has pointed out, he was fundamentally a great laugh, just like Freddie and Julia before him. Pagliacci tutti, all clowns, making the new sound familiar and the familiar sound brand new. Okay, did you understand all that scousiness? Yeah. How's that for a bunch of insights? You can hear the whole thing in the archive. Um, all members can access the live archive. I mean, if you miss a live event, these are monthly, uh, you can listen for free on the members only page. Yes. And here's Denise to tell us how. Andy and Larry appreciate those who listen all through the regular podcast episodes. So we have a new, very cool bonus for you, an exclusive monthly event called Beatles 60 Live. The live show is audio, not video. First weekend of every month, membership is free and audio access is free. It's all free and easy. This audio doesn't appear in the normal podcast feed, but you can access it from anywhere in the world by signing up for Beatles 60 Live. Once you sign up, you'll see how easy access is. Okay, here's how you find the members page. There's just one simple little trick. See this episode notes. Find the Beatles 60 dot group link. Open that in any browser. To get to the secret live page for members, just add live at the end. So it's beatles60.group slash live. Again, beatles60.group slash live. The first time you get there, you'll have to sign up. It takes just a couple of seconds. Just enter any name and valid email and you're there. Bob's your uncle.
It's that straightforward. Got it? That's Beatles six zero dot group slash live. We'll email you in advance of each live so you'll know the exact time to listen, specified in most world time zones, and you'll have a convenient invitation link sent to you privately. You'll find stuff easily using the members only navigation. Dead simple once you're in. Full live event information is all there. If you have any trouble, just contact Andy. He can give you the link privately or resend the confirmation email or whatever. Members who missed the live event can listen later. We'll archive each one on the Beatles 60 Live page. You can just choose a past date, hit the play button and listen anytime. Hope you can join. Ariana Grande here. <laughs> and I wanted to say I love the Beatles 60 podcast because, you know, following the Beatles in 1962, each episode gives you a look into our world. <laughs> Peace and love. But if you want to gain real insight into the group's development and rise, real understanding of how, you know, those lovable mop tops experienced it, the only way is to follow their incredible rise to fame daily with photos and stuff. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's how you do it. <laughs> Peace and love. 60 years ago now is 1962. Following this year in particular gives us so much insight. Various sources are providing exactly these 1962 details every day now on social media. I'll give you the four best sources. Are you ready? Get a pen. I'll wait. <laughs> no, no, I'm done waiting. So you can write these down, okay? You ready? Okay, let's see. There's the award-winning Barmy Beetle blog. Oh, that Barmy Beetle blog. Next. I follow the Twitter account at 60 Years Ago Today and definitely join the amazing Facebook group also called It Was 60 Years Ago Today. It's buzzing, man. <laughs> and my personal favourite, the only audio drama of the Beatles story in existence. This is the one, the only one, and it's called A Day in Their Life an audio drama of the Beatles story, which takes you back even further, 64 years ago, to be precise. Will you still need them? Groovers, listen. The interwebs are full of empty infotainment and the same old, same old about Beatles trivia. You deserve the real story. And what a trip! <laughs> Go deeper every day with these Beatles 60 related online thingies. The story from here just gets more amazing for you every day. Peace and love. I'm out. Ariana Grande. <laughs> How do you say it? I can't put a Ariana Grande. Sounds like I'm getting myself a cup of coffee or something. Ariana Grande. I'll take an Ariana. Can I get an Ariana Grande? No cream. Hold the sugar. <laughs> peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love.